Hey everyone, it's Bob Perkins bringing you another Monday Morning Sales Minute from the Inside Sales Studio here in Arizona. Speaking with a good friend of mine and former boss of mine, Paul Hartzell. Paul, how are you? Hey Bob, great to see you and and, and hear your voice. It's a uh, it's a tough time for everybody in the sales industry, but uh, hopefully we'll give some some ideas to folks today that'll help them out. Well, I know you're you're as you said here in the middle of nowhere in Idaho, uh, the biggest town near you. I didn't even recognize the name, and it looks like <laughs> both of our internets are unstable. So I suggest let's go off camera here, and we'll do a kind of a podcast and. Um, we spoke earlier about it's never been more important to empathize, care, help. Uh, you're certainly not going to call somebody if you're, if you're reaching out to clients or even prospects and barge right in with what you do and what you sell. Uh, and you brought up listening and it's been always been critical, but now more important than ever. So you're going to share some ideas about listening, Paul. Yeah, I certainly do, Bob. And these these are ideas that have been developed over over many years and uh, advising a number of different kinds of companies, uh, companies that are both uh, involved in direct sales of their own product or also companies that are working with uh, distributors and resellers uh, in a tiered type of organization. And what I've found and, and what I like to talk to folks about and these are the people that are, you know, making those outbound phone calls, whether it's a, um, at, a at a point where they're just uh, first uh, doing opportunity development, uh, or if it's a qualified lead that has been then turned over to the account executive. Uh, the bottom line here is that the customer has certain goals, has certain things that they are trying to accomplish. And those are things that we can help a lot with if we let the customer speak. It's not about us trying to explain every one of the tools that we have uh, to help them. It's about being able to listen and, as you say, be empathetic uh, to that uh, potential customer to understand what their situation is today, because undoubtedly it has changed in the last four to five weeks. And to work hard in asking, have a nice short list of questions and asking those people uh, to really articulate what their challenges are because their challenges may well have changed. They may have had a sales force that was on the move five weeks ago and today they have a sales force that's all sitting at home. Those right. people sitting at home might not be very good on the phone. Right. And <laughs> you, have to, you have to learn that. And you, you have to be able to uh, give them solutions that can then be used by the people that are working remotely instead of face-to-face -face sales. Yeah. Do you, do you have any, um, any tips or favorite questions or, or questions and how to ask them uh, more, more so not, not necessarily because of the situation we're in, but just in general, if you're, you know, meeting someone and wanting to get to know some of their challenges or whatever, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Well, sure. Uh, and you know, I, a lot has been made of course about asking open-ended questions. Yeah. Uh, I find my best questions are created from understanding a little bit about the uh, company uh, mm -hmm. that this person works for. In other words, what are their products, what are their services, and how well uh, they are doing in those particular product lines. Mm -hmm. Now, that's something that I want to know before I pick up the phone. Excellent. But once I pick up the phone and start talking to them, um, I want to I want to ask questions like, what are your biggest challenges today in, in driving your business forward in, you know, selling more of whatever the product or service may be? Yeah. The second question I want to ask them is, have you done any research on my company? Uh, I understand you contacted us. Uh, yeah. What was your motivation for contacting us? And do we appear as though we can solve a particular problem you have? 
And the last question, which when I when I was first told about this as a as a sales technique, I thought, gee, I don't know if I'll try that or not. <laughs> and now I now I just do it all the time. And it's a very very simple question: is most people have some kind of solution in place today? Um, it might be antiquated, it might be partial, but you know everybody's using something and they're mm. just trying to make it better. Yeah. And so the question is not all that obvious to most people in sales, which is to say, <laughs> what do you like about your current solution? Sure. And I found that that is a very uh, disarming, pleasant, and conversation starting uh statement to make to someone. What do you like about your current solution? Because here's what happens. They'll give you one or two things that they like, and then they'll usually give you two or three or four things they don't like. <laughs> Absolutely. And what, what that's done for you as the salesperson is it's identified the specifics of your sales solution, of mm -hmm. your product solution that you need to focus <laughs> on. So if you have eight things that you could do for someone, <laughs> they've just told you the two or three that matter. And now you can hone in on those and perhaps move the ball forward a little bit faster. That's outstanding. You know, time tested uh, questions. They were open ended. It gets them talking. Um, as we wrap up here, uh, I like to, I like to use the phrase keep, the damn product in your bag, right? Back in the day when salespeople uh, as old as you and I <laughs> carried a bag, uh, keep it in the bag. Just, just discover, find out, you know, um, how those two or three dislikes, as you say, what's that, how's that affecting you? Right? So, um, Paul, that's great. Tell the viewers a little bit about what you do now today. I know back when we worked together, we were at, uh, a virtual data room company called Merrill Data Site. But what are you doing today? Well, I started a business, Bob. I, I went, went out of the country for the third time in my career and spent three years in Singapore traveling throughout Asia Pacific and, and saw a completely different uh, sales process in that part of the world. I was quite familiar with things in, of course, Europe and uh, North and South America. But, but Asia is a, Asia's a different uh, way of looking at business. So gained a lot of knowledge in three years based in Singapore. And when I came back to the United States at the end of 2015, I created this company called The Perfect Pitch. Mm. And The Perfect Pitch is a play on words, uh, once again, like the word data site uh, uh, created by my wife. But it's a, uh, an LLC that's a play on words around two things. Uh, one is of course the idea of giving a pitch as a salesperson and of course the second thing is that uh, prior to uh, going out and becoming a salesperson i pitched over 700 innings of major league baseball so uh, <laughs> that was the the origins of the of the name so i use that as a platform to work directly with salespeople and helping them um, achieve their sales goals based on their compensation uh, plans, as well as to increase the overall company profile uh, to outside uh, uh, potential customers. That, that's great. And uh, you can just look Paul up on LinkedIn and connect with you that way. Is that the best way if someone wants sure. to? Sure. Yeah, yeah that, can... that's absolutely fine. And <laughs> it's, it's, real, it's real easy to find information about me because unfortunately the game of baseball never forgets a statistic, both the good ones and the bad ones. Can you still throw a fastball? I have to ask. Well, I can still throw, but <laughs> the problem is it's no longer fast. So <laughs> that's why I confine myself to the pitching of sales uh, ideas and advice uh, versus throwing baseballs, but I still do uh, help out with a local high school team yeah. and, uh, you know, enjoy being around the game. And I still annually attend the major league baseball winter meetings and, uh, you know, stay connected to some of the people that I've now known for over 40 years. Yeah, that's great. Well, look, uh, it's been great uh, reconnecting again. Thanks for those tips out to the viewers. Everyone, um, 
stay safe out there and uh, we'll get through this together. Okay. Take care of you. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thanks.